Hi friends, welcome back to Meet the Masters. This month looks a little bit different because we had to do the lessons online via YouTube videos, but next month we'll be back in the classroom and we're gonna have so much fun. So this month's a little bit different than from for the rest of the year we'll be back on track. So let's take a look at our example. Okay, here's what we're going to be making today. So this is going to be our own Saturday evening post, much like the ones that Norman Rockwell made. Let's take a look at the details. So at the top, we've got the title. There's kind of a subtitle. I titled this one Fall Harvest. In the middle, there's kind of a picture of harvest time. There's a basket full of apples and the tree has lost most of its leaves and apples. There's a barn, a full moon, some stars in the sky, some grass. And then of course at the bottom we have illustrated by Mrs. Stuckey. And these are kind of fun because they open up like a magazine, just like the Saturday evening posts that Rockwell did. Okay, so let's begin. I'm gonna set the example out of the way. And the first thing I want you to do is reach for your artist profile slip. Grab a pencil and write your name on the artist profile slip. I'm writing my name. I want you to write your name on the artist profile slip. Stick it at the top of our desk. Go ahead and grab your large, colorful paper. Mine is red, yours might be red or a different color. Okay, now notice the orientation of mine. I've got it going landscape direction, so it's going side to side. It's not portrait direction. It's not going up and down. Make sure yours is matching mine. So it's going side to side, landscape direction. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is turn this into a magazine. So we're gonna start on the left side and we're gonna take this bottom left corner, lift it up, and we want it to come over and meet this corner. So we're gonna meet this corner here we're gonna make sure the two corners at the top meet, and then we're going to go crease the fold up and down. So now we've got our magazine, right? So we had it open, fold it in half, meet the corners as best you can, doesn't have to be perfect, and then crease it on the left edge. Wonderful. Okay, let's turn this over. All right, so now our crease is on the right side. We've got the opening on the left side. Let's grab our artist slip and a glue stick. Turn our artist slip over. Let's give it two lines of glue. One line, two lines. Flip it over and glue it down. Wipe your hand back and forth. So that's nice and stuck on our magazine. Okay, put the cap on your glue stick, put it to the side, turn your magazine over. So we've got our opening, so it opens just like a book. Wonderful. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is prepare the title and the illustrated by portions. So let's move our magazine over to the side for a minute. And let's pick up our page from our learning packet. Okay, so take a look. At the top, there's an example of the title and there's some pretty nice lettering and a good, and a, interesting font that they chose. And then next to the title, there's a small square where we can add our own subtitle. 
Okay, so we might think about that and wait to add that after we're done with our drawing. But let's first focus on the title and getting our font. So take a pencil and notice that inside of the rectangle where it says post, there is a grid. Okay, so there's a grid of dashed lines and it ends up making one, two, three, four boxes from top to bottom. One, two, three, four boxes from left to right. All right, I want you to take a look and notice each letter from left to right is taking up one box. So the P is just taking the first box. The O is taking the second box from left to right. The third, or the S, sorry, is taking the third box and the T is taking the fourth box. So they stay inside of those boxes. And then let's look vertically up and down. So the P uses all four boxes. When you go to the right for the O, the S, and the T, they don't go all the way to the top. So they stop and they just use those bottom three boxes. Okay. So we're going to get fancy in a minute, but we're first going to start with our pencils just to get the letters in place where we want them. All right, so we've got one trial here and a second trial here. So we get to do two different ones and then we'll pick our favorite. So we're going to start with our first attempt here and we'll start with our P. Notice that the line in the P is not all the way to the left. It's almost in the middle, maybe about a quarter of the way in. So I'm going to make my line from the top to the bottom, but it's kind of a quarter of the way in. Now this arch for my P is going to reach all the way to the edge and it's gonna come down one, two, two and a half boxes from the top, okay? So I'm gonna go out to the edge, one, two, two and a half boxes, okay? Then I'll go to my O. It goes all the way to one, two, three, to the top of the third box and all the way to the sides. So I'm just going to start at the top of my third box to make it easy and make an O that takes up most of that box. Same thing with my S. Looks like it takes up from side to side that whole box and it goes up one, two, three boxes. So I'm gonna go one, two, three. Okay, I'm gonna start here and I'm going to try to make my S curve around and meet as much as I can the sides, okay? Then we get to our T, one, two, three, goes all the way to the top of the third and it reaches side to side. So I'm gonna stop or start at the top of my third, go side to side and then pull that line down to the bottom. Okay, looks pretty good. But look, it looks nothing like our first example, right? This is just the beginning. All right, so I want you to go ahead, go down. If you haven't finished, your first try, go down and do it again. Or if you haven't finished your first try, finish that, sorry. Then go ahead and try it again on the second rectangle. Kind of use those boxes as a guide those dashes. Okay, so I've got my first and second try classes. If you need time to catch up, go ahead, pause the video here and do your best on these, but don't take too much time because we're going to use marker and really jazz them up to look really great in just a second. Okay, so if you're ready, let's go ahead and move on. So I want you to look at the two tries that you did 
and decide which letters you like better. So I think I like my second try a little bit better. What we're going to do to make these stand out more and make them a little bit more interesting is use a marker and we're gonna go over the pencil lines. Okay, the first time I go over my pencil lines, I'm gonna use the skinny tip of my marker. So it's not gonna be very thick, but it's just, excuse me, I'm gonna make it stand out, okay. I'm just going over. Just trace your lines just how they are with pencil, okay? Okay, that looks pretty good, but it's still not nearly as fancy and cool as the top one. So here's what we can do next. Instead of using the sharp tip Sorry, it's hard to show you. The pointy tip of our marker, we can lay it on its side and we can get a thicker line for our letters, okay? So if you'd like, use the side of your marker, lay it down and press. See how we're getting a thicker line now? Go ahead and do that to all of your letters. Okay, starting to look pretty good. Getting thicker, looking a little fancier. Okay, if you need a little time, pause. And then come back. Okay, so we've thickened these lines. They look pretty good. There's another thing that we can do to make them a little fancier. So here on the P, notice how the top of the arc, instead of just stopping right at the line that goes down, it goes to the left just a little bit. So if you wanna take your marker, you can Draw just a little line coming out. And then if you draw just a little bit of a curve coming in to that line, you can get a little bit more of that font look. Okay, now down here at the base of the P, if we want, we can make it match. So notice how up here they've got this line going horizontally at the bottom. We don't have that fancy line, so we're gonna add that fancy line first. Okay. And then we're gonna add two curves to connect this line to our new fancy line. So I'm just gonna curve out just a little bit and fill it in with my marker there. It's a little curve line and fill it in there, okay. And if you want, you can go back through, fatten up those letters a little more if you want. Work with your marker. Okay, now my O, I might want to thicken the sides a little bit more so you can go through with that. Okay. Your S, same thing, if you want to thicken some of the lines on your S, go ahead, make it just a little fancier, a little more professional. Now when you get to your T, this is a lot like what we did with our P. So with our T, up here there's a line, a vertical, or a horizontal line at the bottom, there's not one here, so let's add one. And then we can add that curved line to connect that line. Okay. And then up here, if we want to add this fancy top, what we can do 
is here where it goes across, where we crossed our T. Make just a short line coming down here, short line coming down on that side, and then curve a line to come in and connect the top of the T. Okay? So work a little bit with that. If you need some extra time, you can pause it. You might go back through and just touch up any of the letters, any spots with my marker. And if you have any other ideas of ways that you want to do your font, you're welcome to do that too. Okay, so go ahead, pause it if you need more time. Okay, all right, this looks pretty good. Now we have our title. Our subtitle we're going to leave for just a minute because I want you to think about what you're going to add after you make your illustration. But right here in the box at the bottom, it says illustrated by. Then that's going to be you. So I want you to either sign your name or write your name. You can use cursive or any type of font that you like, or you can just print your name. Okay, so I'm going to sign Mrs. Dookie. Okay, so pause for a minute if you need time to finish that. Okay, when you're done, snap the lid back on your marker, put that to the side, grab your scissors. Okay, so we need to cut out these elements because we're going to use these for our magazine cover. So this top one with the post it's divided into a rectangle and then there's a smaller square. We want to keep it all together when we cut it out. So I'm going to follow my lines, my dash lines at the top. And my dash line on the side my dash line on the bottom. Okay, but I don't want you to cut up the middle here. We want to leave that square there because we're going to add a subtitle there later. Okay, so I've got my post title and then I've got the small blank square. Then at the bottom, we're left with our illustrated by Mrs. Stuckey, or actually your name, and we're going to trim that up. So go ahead and take your scissors and cut on the dashed lines. Fantastic. Well, my desk is getting dirty with marker. Okay, so these scraps you can take and just put to the side for right now. But we want to work with our post and our illustrated by pieces. So next I want you to take your two smaller black pieces. You have a, a large black paper. This is going to be used for our illustration. So right now I want you to take kind of your medium black and your small black and we're going to use these to mount our title. Oops, and that's going to be a little bit big. And then our illustrated by. Now when I'm looking at these and this may just be because I had this image sent to me. So it might be a little bit, the scale might be a little bit off and yours might, yours probably fits perfect. If it doesn't though, mine is not centering. So I'm gonna do a quick trim, excuse me for just a minute. Yours probably fits fine. Watch this, when I lay it on top of my black paper and center it, that looks so much nicer and more professional. I've got this black border that goes around my title, right? 
Same down here. Again, I think this is because the image was sent to me. So I'm gonna just do a quick trim. Excuse me for just a minute. I'm gonna trim that edge, trim that, and then I'm gonna lay it in the middle. Okay, good. Now that looks centered and more professional. Okay, so we want to paste these down. Go ahead, grab your glue stick again. Let's go ahead, turn over your post paper, make a rectangle on the back, just follow this shape of your paper, place it in the middle, okay, wipe it and hold it till it sticks, okay. And then let's do the same thing with our illustrated by. Maybe one or two lines of glue, center it. So I've got that nice black border. Okay. All right, let's cap our glue stick. And let me just grab our example again so we can see where we're at. Okay, so we're looking pretty good. We've got our title, our illustrated by, illustrated by, we haven't done any illustrations yet. Let's get to our illustration. That's gonna be in the middle of our magazine. Okay, so we'll move these pieces to the side. You can put those on your magazine for now. And then go ahead and grab your large black paper and your paper plate. Okay, go ahead and center that paper plate in the middle of your black paper and take an oil pastel. You can use any color. This is just going to be the guide for when we cut out our illustration. So I'm just gonna take my oil pastel, hold my paper plate in place and trace around my paper plate. Voila, we've got a circle that will be the guide for our illustration. So it doesn't have to be perfect, just do a quick trace around. Okay, now the illustration for our magazine is going to be a holiday or a seasonal illustration. So because we're in the month of October, if you want to do something that is seasonal like fall leaves, maybe it's a big orange leaf, maybe it's a pumpkin, maybe it's a piece of candy corn or a ghost or a bat or a witch hat, you could do anything like that. I would stay away from people just because those take a lot longer to draw. But if you want to make a seasonal illustration for fall or October, you may, you can do any season or any holiday. So if you celebrate holidays like Thanksgiving and Christmas, you could do a piece of pumpkin pie, a Christmas tree, um, if you celebrate Hanukkah, you could do a menorah, anything that that you like and that reminds you of a season, okay? You can even do anything in the summer. So I'll just demonstrate. So you're going to make your illustration inside of this circle. And let's see, I think I'll just make a pumpkin. So you can make, again, you can make anything that you want that's seasonal. So if you want to make a pumpkin, I could walk you through. So a pumpkin, a really easy way to make a pumpkin is to make kind of a long oval like this, okay, in the middle. And then if you make half of an oval and connect it on one side and another half of an oval and connect it on this side. See how they're getting a little bit shorter though than the first one? It kind of looks like an elephant right now. And then if you make another oval, this one I would make 
a little bit skinnier, a little bit shorter, a little bit skinnier, and a little bit shorter. Okay, so then you have a pumpkin. Not too exciting yet. You can add a stem. Okay, so go ahead. I would start outlining what you want to make and then go th in and fill in with lots of color. Okay, so I'm making a pumpkin, so I did an outline with black. You can use any color to do your outline. And then go ahead and fill in with colors. And these oil pastels look really good on the black paper. So go ahead, press nice and hard to get lots of color out. can't wait to see what kinds of holiday and seasonal symbols you guys come up with. Remember when it comes to oil pastels, you can use lots of colors and kind of blend them together. That's what's kind of fun about them. So if you had a pumpkin and you made some, most of it filled with orange, let me go back and add some complementary colors on my, add some yellow in there too. You can color on top of each other. You can blend them with your fingers. Just be careful once your fingers have oil pastel because if you touch anything else, they'll get that color will transfer. Oops. Maybe red in my pumpkin, a little, little shading at the bottom. And then you can go back after you've added colors, you can go over your outlines again. Make sure that you fill your circle with color. So even though I have one main object, I want to fill in the background. So maybe this is a pumpkin and a patch in the night sky. So it's got some sparkly stars. And maybe there's a moon up there. It's a little orangish, some clouds. Even though your background is black, you can still, because we're using these oil pastels, Look, I'm going to use this pretty turquoise to make kind of a fall night sky shade. Some more stars.
can outline any elements that you add. So I'm going to outline my moon so it doesn't get lost in the sky. And then I'm going to add some, maybe this pumpkin is sitting in some grasses. sure to use lots of different colors on top of each other to get different shades. That works really well with oil pastels. Do some vines off your pumpkin. Outline that too in black. You can highlight anything that you have. Use whites and yellows for highlights. Okay, so I just did mine kind of quickly. Um, you're welcome to work for as long as your class has time for, but we'll just go ahead and move on. Pause it if you want more time before the next instructions, but we're gonna put our oil pastels to the side for a minute, and we're going to assemble our magazine. So, back with the scissors. And I'm just going to cut out my scene with my scissors. I'm going to use the white line as my guide. I don't really want my white line showing because I have kind of a darker night scene. So I'm going to cut in just on the inside edge of my white line. If you want your white line to show, cut on the outside edge. I don't really want them to. got our scrap. We'll toss this in the garbage later. Let's go ahead and get our magazine again. Careful if your fingers have oil pastels on them. Be careful when we're working with our titles since we have white on our titles. Okay, so we've got our title here that says post. Don't forget we've got that empty box we need to put a subtitle in. And then we've got our illustrated by, we're going to lay this out, put that at the bottom. And then we've got our illustration in the middle. Okay, so that's going to fit wonderfully. Now remember, we want our opening to be on the right side, so make sure that your magazine is laid out correctly. Before we glue down everything, I want you to look at your illustration and think of a subtitle. So, hmm, I've got a pumpkin at night. You know what? And I'm just gonna do something, maybe a little basic. I'm just gonna do pumpkin spice because everyone loves pumpkin spice. Okay, so on this little square, if you want, you can add your subtitle over here. So I'm going to write pumpkin. Spice. 
device. Okay, now I'm just doing that quickly and I just did basic cursive. If you want to do cursive, you can, you can do print, you can do any type of font that you like to do. So even if you want to do bubble letters, anything you like, and come up with a unique title, subtitle, for your illustration. So make it match your illustration, okay? All right, so now we've got our title, illustration, illustrated by, it's all laid out. Go ahead, get that Elmer's glue stick back out. Final step. So let's work from the top down. I'm gonna make a rectangle of Elmer's glue stick on the back of my title. I'm gonna center this as much as I can at the top. Maybe rub my hand across it a few times. Okay, next our illustration. Be careful, because this has the oil pastel and that transfers really easily. So I'm just going to make a circle with my glue stick. Okay, and then the border. Stick it down. Now with this one, I don't really want to rub my colors together. You can, but I'm not really wanting to blend right now. So I'm just going to lift my hand and press down, lift and press, lift and press all the way around the circle. So it doesn't smear my illustration. Okay. And then the last thing we're going to do is the illustrated by one, two, Center it as best you can. One wipe, two wipe, three wipe. Okay, so there you have it. Oh, let's put our cap on our glue stick. And there we have it. So that is our project this month. Let's go back. Okay, so I hope you had a good time. Oh, now I'm all down, not centered. But um, I missed you guys. I can't wait to see you again. Next month, we will be back in action as usual. We will be learning about Maria Martinez and we'll be making some pottery with clay. So it's gonna be a really fun activity. I hope I get to see these creations in the hallways when I come next month. And I can't wait to see your faces even more. All right. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching.